aside from doing press where you answer the same questions over and over and over again, how's your day going so far? It's been a good day. I had a few meetings and I've been to the gym. I'm always in the gym every single day. Yes. So I, I was go. Uh, I was training my arms just like two hours ago. It's arms day. Okay. Well, <laughs> well, congratulations <laughs> on the siege. It obviously you put in a lot of work into this movie. When did you actually finish filming? So we shot this movie some time ago. It's like I think it was around Christmas time, mm -hmm. 2021. Or like, so December, um, yeah, we just before Christmas, because I remember when we wrapped up, I jumped on a plane to London and then back to Norway, where I'm from. So going back to mum, you know, yeah. for Christmas. Was so, all of it so, filmed? Yeah, yeah. Oh, part um, of my interruption, was all of it filmed in London? No, it was shot in north of England. So that's why I was in north of England, but I was based in London. So... I had to go home and get my stuff and I go back to my mom, you know, for Christmas. Got it. And, and uh, yeah, and my family, like I have several, several siblings and some nieces and stuff, you know, so, but it will, it, and, and, you know, north of England, um, this is like up very close to Scotland mm -hmm. so in December, November, it's quite cold up there. So, yeah. Was it raining a lot around there? No, it didn't rain so much, but it was cold. And yeah. you, you um, have you seen have you seen the trailer or you seen the movie? You know, it's like yes. I'm in a tent up a lot of the time, and that was cold. <laughs> well, the one of the American cold. stereotypes about England is that it's always raining. We have that about Seattle yeah. too. So yeah, yeah. You, you never know when you're watching a film when they have to hide the rain or the natural weather. So that's why I asked if yeah. it was reading a lot. Yeah. So, so uh, this, that's true. That's true. But the thing is, we were in November, December. It, it didn't rain so much, but it was snowing a tiny bit. Mm -hmm. So we were, we were we were shooting nighttime. A lot of nighttime is 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 over the night, you know. And uh, when we went into the evenings, is it, it sometimes was minus degrees, and and it was not snowing, but it was kind of yeah, you know, it's like. It's not rain coming down. It's 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 white. <laughs> it's tough weather yeah. to wear a tank top in, but you can it wear. It was. The tank it top. was. <laughs> and and uh, yeah, I, I like when we were when we were shooting. I was. I said many times to the director, "Oh, I regret about the costume choice <laughs> because I didn't think you know when you plan something, it's kind of you." You speak with the costume team. It's like, what about yeah. this? What about this? And yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, I like it. Okay. And then you th didn't think about, okay, you're going to shoot it in two, three months. And it's more north. So it's going to be more cold. And we shoot at nighttime. So it's kind of, yeah, we didn't think about it. And uh, But still, it's cool because it's kind of, the harder you need to work for things, the more better it tastes in the end. You know, so when we were done with everything, it, it was a good feeling. Yeah. Well, hey, talking about you yeah. and not just the siege, your career is very fascinating and you're not the first successful bodybuilder to transition into a career as an actor or producer. Obviously, Schwarzenegger, Half Thor mm -hmm. Bjornsson, a lot of people have been able to do that. But was it a clear cut decision of that to acting instead of, say, MMA or boxing or another field? So... When I when I grew up, uh, my dad he's a bodybuilder, mm -hmm. and we own a couple of gyms. So he owned like a gym, and um, when I was seven, he teased me everything about Arnold. You know, it's like he had his you know remember his Arnold Bible, yeah, he made in the seventies. So he, I remember he he showed me a picture from Venice Beach with Arnold, Franco, Lou, and all these guys. Yeah, and he told me about these guys and. After that, I've always been fascinating with, with Arnold, Franco, all these Stallone and all these guys that was kind of muscle guys that was badass on, on television or in movies. So, yes, I think there was something I wanted to do from young age. I had this thing. I want to be a bodybuilder. I want to be, I want to be like them, you know, uh, make action movies. And I always said I want to live in, in America. So I had all this thing with, but it was this combination of, you know, bodybuilding, California, movies, yeah. California. 
I like American wrestling. I, I loved uh, skateboarding. It is, a lot of these things came out of, you know, in the 80s, 90s, it came from, from, from at least from California. So I always had this big passion for that sort of things. So yeah. when I, so even when I was a friend of mine, he told me, because we went to school together, and he said to me, um, do you remember Daniel? And he said this a couple of years ago after we had the release of Last Man Down. He said, do you remember when we went to school and we had, and we went to the English class? Because in Norway, you start with the English class quite early because yes. everyone speaks English as a second language. So I said, yeah, do you remember what you said? So what I did say to the teacher, because he asked or him or her explain like why we need to learn English. You know, it's this um, business language. It's, it's what you need to speak when you when you travel and all this. And I said, I need to learn English because I'm going to go to Hollywood and make action movies. So I was probably nine, ten years old. So it's been it's been inside me like it's a dream. And, it's and, funny. and, and then a lot of people, a lot of people, you know, you have dreams when you're young. Yeah. And then you you lose your dreams or kind of they're still in there, but you kind of you get your you you know you have your job. You suddenly have some kids. You maybe have, have another job suddenly, and you have a lot of loans, and 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 then life is just moving, and and before you know it, you're fifty, sixty, and and you forgot all your dreams. I was very consistent on going after my dreams. I I haven't had many normal jobs in my life. I was doing bodybuilding for until my mid twenties, just competing and traveling around competing, training like crazy. And then when I start doing this acting thing, it's kind of, I just, so, but I've been always conscious about this. You have at least one life on this earth. Mm -hmm. We may have an afterlife, but the one we have here, we know, I want to maximize. And I want to do it with, do those things I want to do. So when, when, when I get older, I can sit down and say, well, I did this, I did this, I did this. And, you know, so I think that's one of the drives. You are, you did, et cetera. And a funny thing related to that, you were looking into America for the culture. And I've always looked into Norway because Norway, to me, is one of the greatest musical countries in the world. A lot of my favorite bands are from Norway, Turbo Negro, Wigwam, yeah. TNT, Surfer Rosa, a lot of great bands from there. Now, when you're training, does the music matter that's playing? So, yes, it does. It does. But when I train, I need something to give me energy. Mm -hmm. So as long as it gives me an energy, I don't want, mind what it is. But of course, it's like, normally it's some, some music with a little more speed, you know, it's kind of, it could be rock. I, I, I can listen to rock and train, you know, it, that, that works. I can even, you know, techno. I do listen to classic music. So sometimes I listen to classic music for movies, you know, and, um, and when I was a teenager, I always listened to the Rocky theme. Yeah. So I had, you know, the, you had a CD with all the Rocky movie, uh, songs on. So I had this one on my CD, you know, I played it every time I went to the gym, every time. Training montage, all of them. Oh, the Rocky IV so soundtrack was, is one of the greatest yeah, yeah. soundtracks ever. Yeah. I go with Rocky IV as the go-to. Yeah, so that's, that's what it was me and the teenagers. You know, go to gym, put on the Rocky music and train like crazy. And if I could train, you, you know, you train until you can't do more, until you go and puke, <laughs> then you're done. That was kind of, then you're done in proper training. Well, my so, last question for you before I let you go, because being very mindful of your time here, because the whole world wants to speak to Daniel today. Uh, the Siege, uh, to me, is a new movie. To you, it's an old movie. Are you allowed to say what's next or what we can look for you in next? So there is a couple of things i i gonna do like two two three movies this year and some of it i can't really talk about at this stage i right. think there's going to be something available an announcement very soon but it was one of them was announced like a couple of months ago 
and that was Fight Pride. So it's announced. I probably can talk about it, you know. Um, and and um, this is it's, it's a movie based on, on on around fighting, but it's a drama. So it's more in that sort of the warrior Rocky. It's not like just bam 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 bam. It's a drama story. And do you know who's going to direct it? This guy. You're directing no. it. Sheldon Lettish, the main oh. blood sport. I had and the pleasure. Of, double, uh, yeah, I'm sorry so to interrupt he's you. Direct it. I had the pleasure of interviewing Sheldon a couple of weeks ago. Very nice gentleman. Yeah, yeah. So, so we we doing this together. Now, so, 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 and and uh, so that's one of the things. I'm I'm having a few other things on the plate, but hopefully we can talk about it soon. You know. Will you get Sheldon to put in a scene where you're dancing, like the kickboxer Van Damme scene? <laughs> yeah, who knows? Who knows? Well, who knows? Um, well, Daniel, yeah. I apologize for interrupting you a bunch of times, but I thank you for this opportunity to speak with you, and I really look forward to whatever is coming next for you. It's wonderful to see how your career has progressed and grown and had such steady thank growth you. in the past few years. So congratulations on the siege and looking forward to whatever is next from you, whether it's drama, action, you producing it, etc. Okay, thank you so much, and thank you for having me. My pleasure. And good luck with everything. Outrocast.